everyone. Today I'm going to comment on this apparently absurd work called The Treachery of Images, painted by René Magritte, a Belgian painter from the 20th century. And I will also tell you a little bit about surrealism which is the artistic movement he can be associated with. At first sight, when we look at this picture, it is fairly normal, I think, to see it as rather pointless, because you just have the drawing of a pipe and below a sentence saying Ceci n'est pas une pipe which is French for This is not a pipe but with the right keys to begin to understand this work it actually makes a lot of sense and uh, gives a lot of food for thought which is what I would like to explain if you wish to stay with me for the next minutes. To begin with, let's try to understand what this image could mean for the artist. Actually, we find it absurd because we do not take it literally. What is a pipe? in uh, the real world. It is an object in which you can put tobacco, you can light it and use it to smoke. But with this picture, this image of a pipe, you cannot do it. So this is not a pipe in reality, but rather the image of a pipe. And this is the distinction that Magritte is introducing here by saying that the thing and the image, the symbol of the thing, are two different elements with different properties. The image being just a representation, a symbol made by man to call upon the real thing. The real thing and its representation, the sign that symbolizes it, have different properties. There are different elements. One is real and tangible. The other is an artifact created by man, but we tend to forget this distinction, and this is why we get confused when we see this kind of picture. We take the sign, the image, for the thing itself, and this makes us believe that the sentence this is not a pipe, is a lie, when in fact it is just the literal truth, because there is no real pipe here. Now you could tell me, okay, the thing and its representation by man are obviously different elements, but this is just heady thinking and making such a, a distinction is not um, very useful. But maybe we should uh, consider this. Every time men make the image of something real, something they perceive, or every time they give only a name to something, they actually create a new entity. 
they generate around them an entire world of signs, of symbols that they use to name, to conceptualize things and uh, make it possible for them to comprehend the world, to communicate, but by naming and uh, representing things, by assigning a symbol to everything he perceives, the man is also generating an entire world of signs and symbols around him, creating like a second mental world, which is totally different from the real, tangible world. And it becomes even more confusing if we take into account that we also reuse these uh, names, these uh, signs and these images that we create to make metaphors. For example, let's uh, look at the word table. A table can be a tangible reality, an object in the real world. There can also be the image or the word table, which are signs, conventions, to uh, quote upon the real table. And then there are all the metaphors we make, like when we say the table of negotiation, we are obviously not talking about a particular table or anything tangible, we are using this concept which is man-made to build, to elaborate a metaphor. And this is important because we tend to see ourselves as a material beings living in a tangible world, when in fact the mental world we live in is made of signs, of symbols, of conventions that we have created, that our species has created, and to the point that we forget this difference and tend to uh, be confused and believe that the name, the image, are tangible realities. In a sense, we all live since uh, language has appeared, since art and uh, the creation of images by men has appeared, we live in uh, a reality which is partly virtual and generated by ourselves. Now we are starting to understand the name of this painting, the treachery of images. It is the lie that we tell ourselves every time we take uh, the image or the sign for the thing itself. And this is not a recent concern. You know that in uh, various religions, like uh, in Islam, in uh, Judaism, in a majority of Protestant uh, churches too, the representation, the images of sacred things are uh, prohibited or discouraged. And this is because men have understood quickly that 
images were just creations of men, they were artifacts, and they were not the thing itself. So when the thing is sacred, fabricating images of it, and even worse, worshipping these images, is something that various uh, religions condemn, because the man would only be worshipping himself when he worships an image and not God uh, as he should. This concern in history gave birth to various iconoclast movements. Iconoclasm means in Greek the destruction of images because uh, icons created by men were considered uh, unworthy of uh, being uh, worshipped or even uh, existing. But even on a broader base, this distinction between the tangible world and the signs and images we produce as a uh, a species has been a, a concern for the philosophy of language for a century and there is also a branch of social sciences called semiotics that studies the creation the use of all these uh, signs that are uh, elaborated by men to uh, comprehend their universe and to uh, communicate between them. And by uh, looking at this distinction between uh, the tangible reality, the truth in a sense, and the mental world we live in, which is more a world of uh, perceptions, signs, conventions, and uh, representations of reality. We are uh, approaching one of the concerns, one of the bases of uh, the surrealist movement. Surrealism is sometimes taken as a synonym for absurd, something that makes apparently no sense, when in fact the very reason to be of surrealism is this uh, understanding or this belief that the man, because of what he is, because of the language he has created, because of his production of images, also because his uh, true self would be buried under a conscience that he has uh, acquired during his life and uh, his uh, experience of tangible reality, then the man would be separated from uh, reality and surrealism is an attempt to uncover the reality of things, abandoning all these layers of signs, symbols, representation, uh, conscience that we have uh, acquired as human beings. And this explains the production of writings, plays, movies, or paintings by the surrealists. They were trying to explore this uh, reality, uh, to uncover it by finding ways to get rid of these obstacles that we put between ourselves 
and what we are, or between ourselves and uh, the reality of the world. There is another uh, famous painting by Magritte called The Son of Man, which represents a uh, man with a black coat, and his face is uh, hidden by uh, a green apple standing uh, right in front of his face. What does it mean? With uh, a bit of humor, it is a way to uh, express the fact that the visible, in that case, this uh, apple is hiding uh, the uh, interesting. What we see um, frustrates us because we would like to see the face of this man, but because there is a visible obstacle between us and the man, we are deprived from uh, the discovery of this uh, truth and this uh, entire painting was made mainly to uh, generate uh, a frustration for the viewer and make him uh, think about this. Now the problem in a sense with uh, surrealism and this is just a personal point of view is that uh, you can easily be disappointed by the gap between this uh, ambition of uh, uncovering the truth and trying to go beyond the uh, forest of symbols we have created to comprehend the world and the reality of the artistic production or the intellectual production of this movement. The surrealists try to advance uh, on this quest for reality by various means, for example using the absurd as a way of making fast associations of ideas, or they tried themselves at uh, automatic writing, trying to write without thinking in order to uh, avoid the conscience to affect their writing in uh, the hope that this would uh, allow their inner self, their subconscious, to express itself, or they were also producing uh, quite a lot of paintings, but the uh, problem, the paradox, is that in order to advance um, in this direction, in order to uh, communicate, they are always forced to use words to use images, and you never know actually if they are approaching from the truth or just adding another layer of concepts, of metaphors to an already confusing mental world. And in a sense, the surrealist um, attempt, which has now been uh, more or less abandoned. This movement uh, grew between the First and the Second World War before declining in the second half of the 20th century. Um, leaves a very interesting, a fascinating questioning. It uh, fertilized uh, philosophy and uh, social uh, sciences, psychology too, but in the end it reminds us more that we are beings 
living in a virtual mental world rather than enlighten us about uh, the real truth assuming it uh, only exists this is all for today i hope i'll see you soon for another video bye bye